So the function y equals 3.28x uh, length from x meters to y feet. Okay. So this x, is that input or output? Input. And what, what kind of things do we input to this function? Numbers. Which represent a number of what? A number of, I think that's right, meters. Yeah, meters. Right, and here's the, what? The output, the output of? Okay, cool. Graph the function. Uh, so what kind of function is this? Is this discrete or continuous? Discrete. Discrete. Continuous. Oh yeah. Discrete. Continuous. Why? Explain why it's continuous and not discrete. Because we're measurements. We're using measurements, not counting. Yeah. Yeah. We're measuring the number of. Meters. Meters. Yeah. The number of meters. Okay. And we can measure any tiny increment of meters. It could be one, two, three, but it also could be one point three four two nine six, right? It could be any little incremental bit. So this graph will be a continuous graph. It will be uh, a ton of points that can be so close together that they're touching each other and eventually making some kind of a shape. A straight line in this case, yeah. So we've got a function that has uh, zero y-intercept and a slope of 3.28. Right, we can look at that way. We could just get a couple of points. Like how many how many feet are in zero meters? Yeah. Zero meters, zero feet. So we've got a, a point right there. And uh, probably putting one meter in there would be pretty easy, right? So one meter is how many feet? times 1 plus 0, so 3.28. 1, 2, 3, there's 4.28 is right around 3 and a quarter. Okay? And since it's a continuous function, we're going to go ahead and draw that line because that line represents all the points that we would get in between uh, 0 and 1 meter. So a half a meter, 0.23 meters, and so on. All of those conversions are legitimate conversions as well. So we draw that line. We can go the other way, because you can measure negative feet if you like measure feet to the left of something or behind you or something like that. That's legitimate. Uh, so there's the graph, all right? If it were discrete as opposed to continuous, what would this graph look like? <coughs> and go a little ways to the right, you'd have another point and another point. Those points would be very distinguishable from one another as opposed to all of these points that make up this line. It's a continuous function. Uh, part B, we've done already. Is it discrete or continuous? It's continuous, not discrete. All right, so number 14. Pack in a box with books. With books, with books. Seem to be familiar. Right there, it's a box of Algebra One books. Um, you can hold at most ten books. Can't fit any more than ten books in this box. The function y equals five point two x does something where x represents something, y represents something else. Let's see. Um, the weight y in pounds. So y represents what? No. The pounds, okay, pounds. Are pounds continuous or discrete? Uh, continuous. Uh, pounds, just like meters, just like uh, inches. inches, just like, uh, well, like, I mean, depending on how you're looking at this, gallons, right? Now, if I go to a grocery store and I buy gallons of milk, I'm not going to buy fractions of gallons of milk, no. except for maybe a half or a quarter if you buy those little containers. But if you go to the gas station, gallons are now continuous, right? by any fraction of a gallon you want, all right? So in this case, uh, pounds, you know, should be continuous, except 
What's the input? Um, what does the x represent? How many books? How many books, right? Now, books. What's that? Discrete or continuous? It's discrete. One book, two books, three books, four books. Not 1.3942 books. It's one, two, three, four. Okay. So are we going to see continuousness for pounds? No, because the books control, right? Input controls the function. Input, output. Right? We're going to put in a number of books. We've got a number of pounds, and those pounds are going to come out in this discrete way. Okay? This function is a discrete function because of the input. And that's why I ask you about the domain all the time. Is the domain discrete or continuous? Right? It all matters about the domain. It kind of controls the function. Um, what would you gather about this 5.2? What does that tell you about the, the books? They weigh 5.2 pounds for every one book. Yeah. Right? 1 times 5.2 would tell you how much one book weighs. 2 times 5.2 would tell you how much two books weigh and so on. Uh, is 52 in the range? What's the range? What's the definition of the range again? Yeah? All possible outputs. Yes, all possible outputs. So the question they're asking, is 52 in the range? Is 52 a possible output of this function? Yes. 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 And do we have a reason to that? Somebody besides Sean? Sean was just feeling this morning. Yes. Um, because if you plug in 10 for X, and how do you know you're allowed to plug in 10 for x? Because you can put at most 10 books. Most, yeah. So that's a, a permissible, right? So 10 is okay. Huh? At, at most 10 books in a box. Right? So if, if we were looking for a range that required more than 10 books, well, that's out of the question. But if right at the very edge, right, 10 is the maximum number of books. So 52 is the maximum amount of pounds this box is going to weigh. Uh, so Yes, because of what Kate has just said, and we all heard it. Is 15 in the domain? The domain is all of the what? Possible, possible what? Input. Input. Inputs. Is 15 a possible input? Yeah. Now Kate has just read it for us. At most 10 books. The input is books, 10 is the most. Graph function, is the domain discrete or continuous? Well, that graph's already graphed, so let's just jump back to that graph. There it is. Is the domain discrete or continuous? Discrete. discrete we talked about. Now the range is continuous, or it has the possibility or the, the ability to be continuous, but because it relies on the number of books, and books is discrete, you have a discrete function, you have a discrete domain. Okay. <coughs> of course, you guys sound like you are doing great. So let's pass that back in. Thank you. Discrete. Pounds of raisins. Continuous. Continuous. Raisins. Discrete number of raisins. Gasoline. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's let's throw out like three examples of a discrete domain. A desk. A desk. Desks. Okay. Good. Monica. Pieces of paper. Okay. Pieces of paper. Alex. Trees. 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 How about this, uh, uh, continuous? Kids? Yards. Yards, continuous. Uh, uh, Johnny? Feet. Feet, continuous. And looking for somebody new, somebody new. Uh, Sean's kind of new. No. Go ahead, Sean. Pounds. Pounds, all right. Very good. I'm trying to choose examples. All right, so everybody feel like they got a grasp on? Continuous and discrete. Great. All right. Um, so, at least for the first little bit here, I want you to take out your books. from someone who tried something initially and I realized that was a mistake. Ready? Why did why it was Okay. But now, how did you 
figure out that was a mistake? So y equals negative 25 <coughs> times 2 is where you start to see mistakes. Because what happened? We got negative 25 times 2 is negative 50. Which one 50? Did anybody else make that mistake initially? Don't lie, people. I Maybe, saw, I I saw several people making that mistake. So that would give me 100, right? 100. Yeah. So this would work well if this was like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? Yeah. 0, 2, 4. So how do we fix that problem? 12.5. 12.5 instead of 25. So the 2 times this number, whatever it is, gets you the 25 that you want to subtract off of 150. So let's change this to half of that. 12.5. What if it went 0, 3, 6, 9, 12? Uh, it would be one-third of 25. One-third of 25. Yeah, okay, very good. Uh, well, good, good day to you all. See you tomorrow.